Thank you, Madam Chair. Tonight, I'm very proud to introduce Principal Brenda Wagner from Killarne Lakes Elementary. Uh, the board is aware that uh, Killarne Lakes Elementary is a blue ribbon school, one of the highest performing elementary schools, not only in the state, but in the nation. And we're happy to have you there. I see several of your teachers, Mr. Mazur's back there, I believe, one of the great teachers. I see other teachers, but welcome, Ms. Wagner. Thank you so much, Mr. Superintendent. And yes, I am the proud principal of Killarne Lakes. I've been there for going on eight years now, and we work very hard at Killarne Lakes. I've actually, I don't have a box of chocolate for you, oh. but I do have some very <laughs> special people with me to here tonight. I have Mrs. Um, Hermena Arango, our tech, tech con, if you'll stand up, please. And Mr. Scott Mazur, our fifth grade teacher. He's also our team leader, and he's been at Killarne Lakes now for about 15 years. I uh, certainly want to say thank you for letting us, uh, inviting us here tonight and letting us share our showcase tonight. Um, I, give you, I will give you a little bit of background. We currently have 888 students at Killarne Lakes, pre-K through fifth grade, with about 90 employees. Um, we have had the honor of, of being named National Blue Ribbon School by the DOE Department in Washington, D.C. twice, once in 2004 and last year in 2012. And we are consistently one of the top scoring elementary schools each year in Leon County Schools, which we're very, very proud of. Our mission is to develop lifelong learners, and what better way to do that through technology? So tonight you're going to see an example of our iPad program. You each have an iPad in front of you and a log on code if you'd like to go at a later date to actually go back on to Edmodo, um, and you'll be able to use that tonight. But first, let me have Mr. Scott Mazur come up. He's actually going to walk you through this and share with you what our kids do in the classroom with our iPads. Mr. Mazur. Sure. Thank you for the opportunity, but to begin, uh, the unlock your iPad, it's one, two, three, four. So. This is a test, isn't it? This is <laughs> we tried to keep it simple. But if I could have, I would have made it for the same number. Um, right now, uh, I would like to begin by thanking the members of the school board and Superintendent Pons and Mrs. Wagner for the opportunity to share what I do in my classroom. Uh, this opportunity would not be possible if it were not for the vision and the backing of Mrs. Wagner. Uh, this endeavor started about three years ago when I shared to a bunch of business partners what I did with laptops. And when the presentation concluded, I have a, had a parent from my classroom come to me and say, what's the next step? And I said, well, I think an iPad would be really cool. And uh, the next day, uh, the McKinley family donated an iPad to Clarn Lakes Elementary School and gave it to me for my classroom. So it started the whole use of the iPad. Um, last year, um, you know, when that happened, Mrs. Wagner had mentioned at the end of that year, you know, trying to move towards the 21st century and what we should do. And uh, she had kind of mentioned uh, that she wanted to do an iPad cart, get 21 iPads, and try to do this model classroom, uh, which sounded like a great idea, which brings us to where we are today. Uh, at this time, I'd like to share how we utilize the iPads and the iPad cart. To begin, I used uh, the teacher iPad to kind of present information to the students, uh, but now it's kind of morphed into something completely different where using sites like Edmodo, I can go ahead and have a direct interaction with the students to keep real-time learning. Uh, the goal of my classroom implement implementation has been to maximize the goal has been to maximize, uh, let's see, individual student learning time with meaningful application and content. So at times, the iPads are used as organizational devices. I take a picture of our planner and I post it on uh, Edmodo and the students go through and they constantly have updates as to uh, what's going on in the classroom. Each day I post the assignments that are due and also have basically my lesson plans up there as to what we did in the classroom. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that we use the iPads for is for lessons. I create a lesson that goes along with the lesson objective and I post it on Edmodo. It's usually about five to ten minutes. The students get an opportunity to go ahead and view that video and when they're doing that, I go around the classroom and try to deal with misconceptions of the lesson from the day before. So that way we're not losing any learning time and I get to go ahead and get that one-on-one -on -one with the students that need it. The other part that it does is it creates a library of lessons. So because I've been doing it for a year, I've got lessons that are 
you know, go all the way back to the beginning of the chapter. And I've used some of them with these students, but I often find that the misconceptions aren't the same, so then you have to teach it in a different way. So constantly reinventing the wheel as we do that. The last part is the application where students create with the iPads. And they've got this app, Lino, where it ends up being like a post-it board and edu creation where they actually make some videos and then iMovie where we go ahead and take concepts that we did in class, for example, a paper towel test, take pictures of it, show what they did as far as the experimenting, and post it to Edmodo because Edmodo has a link that notifies the parents either on a cell phone or on their email account that there's been a post that's been made. And that notifies them that they can go and look at the video that we just put up so they can see what their child's doing in the classroom. So like I said, the goal has been to maximize individual student learning time with meaningful application. And so what this does, it allows me to go ahead and have students respond in real time so that they are advocates of their own learning. So the students will go ahead and take a screenshot of something they've been working on and they'll send that to me in an Edmodo post that's direct. So no one else knows about it. It's a secure kind of thing. They don't have to be like, look, I don't get it. And I take it, I make a video and I send it back to the student. So the student goes ahead and if they're at home and they get it, they can watch it or when they get back to the class, they can watch it. So for example, today I had the lesson um, there's a one or two of them that's on the, uh, the iPad for you to kind of look at their education. Um, if now's not the best time, I gave you a sheet of paper with your username <laughs> login so that you can go back to it and take a look at the lessons. And if for any reason you have any questions about Edmodo and the iPads, you're more than welcome to respond to me. Um, you know, Mr. Wallen, if I had your picture, I would have put it in there for you as well. But just uh, as well. <laughs> Cool. Yes, it is. Um, as far as Edmodo, <laughs> what the students are also being asked to do as we go towards Common Core, and this is an example, is to explain their reasoning when they have misconceptions. So I ask them to go ahead and respond in a way that shows that they have understanding. Um, Another piece that we did today was astronomy was our first. We made a video. Uh, each student took pictures and recorded themselves making a video of instruction so that they understood what they were doing with the textbook. So the textbook became basically a, a movie for themselves as a study guide. Part of what we're trying to do with that, though, is also create responsible use of the device. And that just by making the movie doesn't make it something that is... Um, going to further their understanding. So we do a lot of talking about is this the, did you do a very good job of reaching the, the content? Did you generalize things? Did you use specific examples? And by being able to go ahead and talk about it, they refine what they've done and it gets better and better as the year goes on. So the individualized instruction, students come over, they ask me, I've got a video on there where a, a student had a question, we talked about it, I video it, I put it on there so they can go back and take a look at it later. We go ahead and take pictures of papers that they've worked on and we talk about how divisors become, you know, part of the de denominator and the remainder of the numerator and think about money and constantly trying to make sure that we reinforce these concepts. So, like I said, the goal has been to maximize student learning in a meaningful way. And so, in closing, in closing I'd like to thank you uh, for your, the opportunity to present to you, uh, to the board, Superintendent Pons, Mrs. Wagner. Thank you very much. I want to add a few yeah. words. I'd like sure. to add a few words, if I may. Um, I wanted, although we actually started this program in our fifth grade classrooms, I want to recognize two of our fifth grade teachers who are here tonight, Mrs. Marie Worrell and also Karen Parsons. It shows you what a tight group this fifth grade team is, and they work together very hard. So thank you guys for being here. Any questions? Right. Any questions? Thank you. Outstanding. Uh, Mr. Van Camp. Oh, thank you for the presentation. I was just sort of sitting here reflecting back in, in history a little bit because my son attended one of the first students at Clarn Lakes when we opened it. Uh, he was in first grade. And I was the closest school board employee that lived to Clarn Lakes. So <laughs> back in those days... <laughs> One of my functions was to pick up the mail from the school, bring it to the county office, and take the county office mail <laughs> oh. back there. And we did have new technology that went in. The Apple IIEs went in. One of the first schools to have the Apple IIEs. So I was just sitting here thinking how much things have changed in such a short time mm -hmm. and just amazed. And, uh, uh, and uh, just thank you for sharing with us tonight and, you know, and the 
that closeness and the camaraderie of the teachers of Clarn Lakes has always, always been there. And so uh, we just appreciate what you do. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank Mr. You. Superintendent. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll yield to Ms. Rasmussen and then I'll well, go she, out. I was okay. just going to talk about not being smarter than a fifth grader because I'm stuck in where are the galaxies and I can't get out. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but thank you so much for being so innovative and proactive in this regard. We often hear presentations from vendors about all the amazing technology that's out there and available to us. And it's really terrific to be able to see you putting in, it into place. So thank you for that. Ms. Lewis Butler. Yeah, I want to thank the uh, principal, Ms. Brenda Wagner, for uh, all her enthusiasm and, and her karate as a team. I should work at that school, and I always get your newsletters and everything. You do a fantastic job out there. Thank you. Now, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Scott, great presentation. Thank you. Uh, it, it reminds me of several things. First, uh, the high level of teaching we have in Clarin Lakes and leadership, and uh, we have throughout this district. But there's a lot of neat things going on around the country related to how important technology is in closing the achievement gap. I mean, we spend a lot of time, I spent my whole career, you know, adding reading classes, adding math classes, adding science, class, science classes, more time in the seat, which everybody is doing. But uh, there's a lot of, of places in the United States where by putting technology into students' hands, they're actually <coughs> doing more in closing the achievement gap than we have in other ways. So I think we're, we're really on to something as a nation. And in fact, uh, Mr. Van Camp was with me the other day in Hartsfield, and we were talking to third and fourth grade students about the value of technology and how, you know, if there was one thing we could do as a district, if we had a one-to-one -one initiative that we could find a way to pay for, where they could have 24-hour access to information and communication with teachers, communication with with the outside world where they're exposed to travel that they might not be able to go on. And I heard that directly from the students and I was at Sealy the other day and I was in Miss Bellamy's classroom, I was in other classrooms talking to students and I heard the same type of thing. So I think sometimes that what you're doing is what we have to continue to do in teaching is to make sure that we teach the children today in areas that they're comfortable with, not what we're comfortable with. And they love technology. I can give them my smartphone and do more things with it than I'll ever be able to Spray do. It out, <laughs> and I think sometimes uh, we have to look at things differently. And I think that's what you're doing. So I just want to compliment you on that. Uh, Mr. Crow's got a committee going together on this, and I hope that he quickly adds you to that committee <laughs> and to put you on that Great. because this is what we're trying to look at. And. Uh, just a great job. We're in a great job, too. We certainly want to say thank you for your support because we would not be the A school that we are without this, our superintendent, our school boards, our district administrators, our elementary director, Peggy Youngblood. And we, we, really, we really appreciate your support. Thank the, you. We're not quite finished yet singing your praises. Oh. Mr. <laughs> Crumpler? Well, I just want to echo what everybody sure. else has said. I'll be brief. Um, nope, I, no I see problem. that you've added me as a student. And uh, my, my fifth <laughs> yeah. grade teacher, Mr. Blair, would be very proud that I finished one assignment in the fifth grade. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, and to the, the college students that are in the audience, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, to the college students that are in the room uh, taking a class that they're here for tonight, uh, when Mr. Van Camp was talking about the Apple Too Easy, that's back in the day when we had things called vinyl records and VCRs. So. <laughs> um, but, but, the, but the technology, on a serious note, um, th these are, you know, as the superintendent said, these are things that engage our students, mm -hmm. and if we're not doing this, then um, they're, they think that we're just old fuddy-duddies and not keeping uh, up with technology and, and creating opportunities for them to be engaged and learn. So, so Great. Excuse me. Thank, thank you, you, colleagues, for your comments. And thank you, Ms. Wagner and staff and others for bringing this idea and sharing it with us for your leadership and for your continued commitment. All students learning in Leon County Schools. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. all you do. I they want these back. Yeah. Oh, do we get to keep these? Yes. We may we? <laughs> oh, I guess that means no. All right, then. Just for I'm the hour. I guarantee you they're coming to get these. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect they will. Well, we will give them up. Oh. All right, we'll move along in the agenda. and I believe